Welcome to the second keynote with the topic title, Building the Crowd-Powered Hyperloop. Warmly welcome to Andres de Leon, CEO from Hyperloop TT. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for having me here. So let's see if we start with the presentation. OK. It's a pleasure to be here and, you know, and having this opportunity to share with you what has been our journey. Let's start from the beginning. OK. In 2013, uh, when Elon created the Alpha paper and said that he had no time to develop the Hyperloop and encourage other companies to do it, we created the first Hyperloop company in the world. And this is the wall in our office in, in LA. And what this wall represents is the job of a lot of people, a lot of different companies, different people around the world that has put all their minds together to work on this, to help us to create this dream and to help us to create this new future of transportation. Let's talk a little bit about our journey to arrive here. In 2013, we created the first com the company, and then we have our first governmental agreement in 2014. 2015, we were presenting our vacuum solution that was developed in partnership with Label, and we already demonstrated there that the crowdsourcing, the way of working, you know, together with people and together with partners, was a good success and a way to accelerate the development of this system. 2016, we revealed to the world our passive magnetic levitation system. This system was developed in the 19th in Lawrence Livermore Lab. We took the system, we took the team that was working there. Richard Post was one of our first contributors. We adapted to the vacuum environment. We solved all the problems that they had in the past, you know, and we were able to use it for the Hyperloop system. So we didn't try to reinvent the wheel. We saw what was there and we tried to adapt it and to improve it, you know, to accelerate the development. In 2017, we have a very important milestone for our company. We were able to create our first European R&D center in Toulouse, and we did our 320 meters, a full scale, four meters diameters um, system. And one year later, we developed our first full scale capsule fuselage that you can see there. What happened there is that we are already manufacturing, we have already manufactured the second one and we are in the process, you know, to work on the third one, to just improving with this idea of continuous improvement and, you know, not trying to, again, that, but using all the expertise of our partners. Partners that were coming from aviation industry, partners that were coming from rail, okay? But it was also important to start to work in commercialization and to start to think seriously about how we were going to commercialize this. So like two years ago, we released the first Hyperloop feasibility study uh, in North America that was developed um, together with NOACA, paid with public funding, uh, created by an independent uh, source, you know, and with our help, and with very good results. And we work with TubeSuit, an independent safety assessor, to develop also one, um, our regulatory guideline. We work with Munich Re to work also in a complete risk report that makes all the risk analysis of the company, the technology, and the product to make them make an statement more than two years ago saying that the technology of Hyperloop TT will be insurable. And finally, with our help, and with the help and in collaboration with Hamburg Port, with HALA, we have rebelled to the world our uh, concept of the hyperport. And I will explain later on a little bit more what it is. As one of the industry leaders, you know, we thought from the beginning that we have to work in three different areas. We needed to work in technology advancement, we needed to accelerate the time to market because, you know, there is not unlimited funding for these kind of initiatives in the world. And they needed to work also in the commercial readiness. So in the technology advancement, we create this full scale system. We developed our proprietary passive magnetic levitation. We developed a modular vacuum solution that I will show later. Easy to plug and play, easy to maintenance, easy to install. Regarding the time to market, what is the way that Hyperloop TT works? 
We have been working together with all our technological partners to create the IP, to create the product. Okay? But even more, now that we are in the phase to start commercialization or thinking in commercialization, what we will do is we will be licensing our technology to the infrastructure operator and to the transportation operator. This will allow us that with a very lean structure and with a very lean company, we will be able to accelerate the development and the deployment of the Hyperloop technology. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how much of the cake you have. It's about how fast you arrive to the market. Regarding commercial readiness, we were working, as I said before, we worked with Munich Re to create a complete um, risk analysis and an insurance framework. We work with the people of TUFSUD, creating kind of a first draft of regulatory guideline that then we serve with the industry. We serve with uh, DOT in the United States, with Digimove in, in Europe, to try to accelerate the creation of the standards and the regulation. We have more than 50 corporate partnerships, because there was one moment that we decided also that not only people, not only individuals, but, but uh, industrial partners, you know, needs to be part of this. And we are very focused on three development projects around the world and two commercial projects. So some pictures about our system. Here you see the full-scale Hyperloop test system that we have in Toulouse, France, where we are working on testing continuously. We are testing the vacuum, we are testing the system, we are testing the capsule, all the different areas. And here you see some pictures of the, the backup system, the container, fully, fully containerized, you know, all our backup system in, in this, um, in this uh, system that is fully autonomous, plug and play. You have 10 of these every 10 kilometers, and we section the system with these bulbs that we have generated in LA in order to be able that if you have a problem, you can repressurize in seconds, you know, and you can solve the problem or go to maintenance or something like that. And finally, a picture of our capsule fuselage that was developed by Artificial in Spain and that we already have the second one coming. Again, as I was explaining before, at the same time that we were developing the technology, it was really, really important to prepare the company for commercialization. We didn't want to arrive uh, to, the, to the market and then having to wait for two, three, four, five years, you know, for having the regulatory environment. So we have been working, and on this, we have been working with all the companies of the Hyperloop system, and we are very proud, you know, of this Hyperloop system that has been created around the world. As one of the companies that was pioneering this, as you can imagine, you know, we are not just creating a company, we are creating an industry, and we are helping to create an industry, and this is very proud. And together with all of them, we have been working with the different regulators around the world, you know, and to accelerate this. But of course, in today's world, you cannot develop a transportation system without thinking in sustainability. Sustainability is a must. So, you know, we joined the UN Global Compact, we signed, you know, and it was not difficult for us because it was in our DNA. We wanted to create a system that improved the passenger experience, is efficient from an economical point of view and doesn't rely on public subsidies, and is sustainable. So we prepare all our company, you know, to be able to to this challenge, and we have been working from the beginning, thinking in this sustainability. But this is not enough. This is not enough because at the end of the day, if we want to demonstrate the hyperloop, if we want to demonstrate to the world that hyperloop works and works every day, it's not enough with 300 meters, 500 meters, whatever. We need a commercial prototype. Okay. And this is where we have been focused in the last two years to prepare our first commercial prototype. Five kilometers, enough to demonstrate that the technology works. Of course, not enough to demonstrate that you can go to 1,200 kilometers and say that you create a roller coaster, that that's not what we want. But enough to demonstrate that the technology works, that everything is reliable, and that it's capable to move people every day in a reliable way in a viable way and, you know, facing all the problems and travel of a normal operation of an Hyperloop system. So we have this agreement with, uh, with in Abu Dhabi with a big real estate company. We have been working with our partner 
Dar al Handasar to create the concept design. And now we are analyzing, you know, the next steps for this project going there, for moving forward. And again, as I was saying, at the same time that we need to work on showcasing the technology, demonstrating the commercial viability of the technology, we also need to work on development of future pipelines of projects for the system. And this is important because this will allow us that the big infrastructure funds, the big infrastructure companies, even the big transportation operators, and all of them are welcome to this revolution, you know, can really visualize the potential and the capabilities and the options. So we create, we did this feasibility study with the help of NOACA, paid with public money, that, that's really important because guarantee also the seriousness of the, of the project for the connection between Chicago, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. We released the feasibility study, and now we need to go to the next phase, that is the environmental study. And finally, with the help of now that we are in Germany, you know, I know we are not in Hamburg, we are in Frankfurt, but anyway, we are in Germany, you know, with the help of um, Hamburg Port, we create a joint venture in a 50-50 basis with them to generate Hyperport, the concept of Hyperport. And what is Hyperport? Hyperport is the hyperloop of moving containers plus the interface with the port operations. And this is very important too, because we have tried to develop something that is not, maybe it's not the fanciest uh, system in the world, but it's pragmatic, it's very practical, works absolutely great, and can generate a lot of uh, throughput, and with a logical scenario, you know, of commercial viability. We have been working in the design of the system, we have been working on the um, operations, on how it's going to be operated, in, in maintenance, and we have been working also in the commercial viability. And I'm very happy to say that in the ITS in Hamburg, we will present the concept to the world, and we will start talking with different ports around the world, you know, for commercialization. Let me show you the video. I think. So the important part is not the video. The important part is the job that we have been doing to really arrive to that video, you know, and to really arrive to that. The decisions that we have made, the trade-off studies, and all the job that has been done during two years by two teams, one from Hyperloop TT and one from HALA, you know, to arrive to this point. So basically, summarizing, we have our full-scale Hyperloop test system. We have these two feasibility studies, the one that we did in Abu Dhabi Lane, well, we have other feasibility studies around the world. Now we have raised Brazil, the one in Great Lakes. But the three that you are seeing here, Abu Dhabi, Great Lakes, and Brazil, has been really even made with external consultants, with, you know, paid with public money, so, you know, has allowed us to maintain the independence of that study. And we are working on the commercial prototype and our full-scale Hyperloop test system. But let me talk about how we are building this, because this is the part that I'm personally more proud of. In 2013, when Elon released the Alpha paper and he said he had, cannot do it, we were part of an incubator funded with the help of NASA and Girvan Institute to build companies in a completely different way. To build companies using crowdsourcing. What does it mean? People working in exchange of equity of the project. So we uh, thought that this was a great project to put in our platform. We incorporate a company, we put it in the platform. Immediately, we have 200 people around the world that they were interested about us. And that they wanted to collaborate in this. Long story short, you know, uh, we created, today we have 
more than 800 people around the world, we've got more than 50 companies collaborating with us. Companies of all the different fields, from the creative, design, digital, engineering, manufacturing, companies on services, logistics, on research and development, all kinds of partners that are collaborating together with us and creating the technology together. And the way that we work is we don't try to reinvent the wheel. We try to use what they have and we try to leverage their expertise. So, as I was saying before, we have 50 people, 800 contributors around the world, people with a lot of experience that give us normally around 10 hours a week of their time. We have also a center with 100 engineers in Toulouse, you know, that we developed with one of our industrial partners. Five offices, we have more than 52 teams working in different areas in 45 countries. So, and we have a C-suite and engineering suite that is all around the world, you know. And I think that that's one of our advantage. We are, we call ourselves a local company. We are global, but we are also local. We have people from different areas. So, what's the future? How does it look, the future? As I was saying before, and I'm going to try to go very fast, you know, because I don't have a lot of time here. Look, what we need to create is a system that, as Diana was saying, improve drastically the passenger experience, but also a system that is financially viable by itself. In our Great Lakes study results, in addition to all these numbers that you are seeing about how we can create jobs, how we can uh, increase, you know, the income, spend it takes base and all of that. There is one data that for me was killer, was very, very important. In 25 years, we can have a payback period on this system. So what does it mean is that you don't need tax subsidies, you know, for investing in this. What that means is that big infra funds, big infra companies could take the lead on this privately, you know, and develop the system. And of course, we have a, a positive benefit cost ratio of 2.2, when normally you are moving between 1.2, 1.4 in this kind of studies in other modes of transportation. And the most important thing is fully sustainable from the point of view of the mission. Our proprietary technology of passive magnetic levitation, you don't need to electrify the truck. You have very low consumption of energy, and the, the line is like this. It's not exponential like in other modes of transportation. So from the point of view of operations, we are emissions free. And in that study, we could save 143 million tons you know, uh, on this. So a system that improves the passenger experience, a system that is financially viable by itself, and a system that is fully sustainable in their operations. That's what we need, and that's the future that we are envisioning. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to all the companies and all the people that is working on this, because we really think that we have a responsibility to get this to the market. Thank you. Many, many thanks to Andres de Leon for your keynote. Thank you. You're the CEO <laughs> of Hyperloop TT.